Hi, Forensics. How are you? It's, I'm really glad to be with you all again. I wish I could see all of your faces. It's a lot easier for me to speak to and interact with you directly. So I'm going to interact with this green dot sitting in front of me and really look forward to our Q&A times or even times that you may need more help. So um, let's go through this first part. Um, and uh, then we'll, I'll kind of explain what we're going to do. Okay, because these first two days are going to be a little weird because I've got to try to figure out how to fill in some time if, uh, <laughs> because there's a giant crime that's supposed to be happening and I'm sure you're wondering what I'm going to do. I'm wondering what I'm going to do. I'm hopeful that May we could get back, but who knows? We, you know, everything's still up in the air, but just as long as you all stay safe and everything um, is worth it. So try to think of it that way. Um, and just know that we already talked about your milestones will happen. Um, the school makes sure of it. So just kind of hang in there. So let's go ahead and start with um, the PowerPoint. So let me share this with you. Okay. So um, you're going to use your RenWeb student account for links. You are going to um, watch the video of the recorded lesson like you're doing right now. And you will, uh, well, I'll explain more of that in just a second. You're going to do uh, some things that <clears throat> won't happen in these next two videos um, because I'm doing more of a review. So, but I'm going to go through them anyway. Um, you usually are going to take notes over the video that you watch, um, which is this right here. Um, however like i said these next two days won't be you're going to have an assignment to do um so today's assignment will be like a fingerprinting thing and then tomorrow's will be a lab of fingerprinting to help you remember and then wednesday will be a dna thing so we're going to review the last two chapters we left off on these next two days um so you won't take notes until wednesday really over what we're videoing and i'll go over what those notes look like today, but then I'll really go over them Wednesday, so don't worry. Um, you can, of course, take notes as much as you want to today, but I'm not gonna require those. Um, you're going to attend the live question and answer session on Zoom from 2.30 to 2.55, and then complete the assignments that are listed in Google Classroom. Now, they're in RenWeb saying this is your homework, um, and it'll be a link to go to Google Classroom to get that. Um, if you, if, you're needed if you need me for extra help um you need to email me and i'm available from 3 30 to 5 each day and you gotta keep in mind i got four classes to kind of bounce back and forth and my ap kids will probably be taking um a, a bit of time there but i will make sure i see everybody because you every one of you are important to me okay um next whoops so the materials you'll need with each video session, you'll need your notes and hopefully you have them. If for some reason you don't, just get some paper, and, but make sure that you keep all those papers together, okay? So, cause you will need these notes at some point. We're just kinda filling our way through this like you are right now. You'll need your colored pens and highlighters as we go. Uh, make sure you have that crime highlighter. If you don't, if you don't have highlighters around your house, just do the best you can. Maybe you got some crayons or something you can color. I don't know. We'll all figure it out. Okay, so how to take notes. You remember if it's repeated, you should write it. If it's on what we're gonna call the board, not if you're bored, cause I'm kinda bored, but you're bored, but don't write that. I don't know. Whatever board I find, um, if I, it's written on it, you should write it. And that's where we'll draw stuff. And you know, we've got the next chapter's tool marks and bullet markings and all of those. And, um, tool marks, I can definitely draw some stuff, but I think I'll be drawing mostly on the PowerPoint itself. So, um, we'll, and then I'll continue to tell you when and what to highlight. Okay. So no worries. All right. So on the days that you turn in notes, what you'll do is that once you're done with the YouTube video, you'll have taken the notes, you'll take a video of, or not a video, my bad. You'll take a photo of it and then you'll upload that photo to Google classroom and that'll be your homework. But like I said, today and tomorrow, there's no notes during the YouTube because we're just doing review. Okay, so fingerprinting. So we left with this. Um, we went through it moderately fast because lab does most of it. However, 
um, there are three more labs that we were supposed to get to um, after spring break. And well, it's after spring break now, but we're not in the room, obviously. So yeah, trying to figure that out. So um, be ready. I may have you write with Sharpie on your finger and then put it down. I don't know. See, it, I mean, in the Q&A, if you'll look around your house today and see if maybe all of you, we can maybe brainstorm on how to do some of, some of our stuff for your own fingerprints. Um, I don't know, maybe take a picture of your finger. I don't know, see, see what you can do and then um, we'll discuss it in the Q&A. All right, so let's review a little bit about fingerprints. Remember, there's three principles. The first principle being that your fingerprint is individual to you and no two fingerprints have been found to be alike. Um, because remember, they're created in the womb um, and it, you know, we all have a genetic fingerprint. However, however your fingers are leaning or what you're doing in the womb when the fingerprints are being developed changes what they look like. And so here are some of the patterns and features that you already have written in your notes, the ridge ending, bifurcation, island, ridge, ridge enclosure, spur, and so on. Um, so on the test, on the last test, the, the, the biggest problem I had it wasn't whether it was things were right or wrong. It was being able to identify exactly what you were circling. So when you do the homework tonight, when I ask you to circle something, please make sure you're encircling like the entire spur. Don't go through the spur. Encircle the entire thing and then um, do a leader line off of it that says spur. Um, now spur is tiny, more like, um, I don't know, a bifurcation. Encircle the entire bifurcation. Don't circle through it. Okay, so that, you know, that was the biggest mistake on the tests, if there were too many mistakes, so no worries. Okay, and so again, there's the ridge ending enclosure bifurcation and island and make remembering that the ridge endings are not the end of the fingerprint, okay? Oh, I remember another thing on that test was people saying that the core was one of the things. I know the core is, excuse me, I'm back on your um, note card. However, remember I told you that the core isn't considered, um, it's not really, even though you can say loop core, core or world core, that's really hard to say like run web. Um, every fingerprint's got a core and so it's not really identifying. So don't do core as one. You can certainly put it, but if I'm asking for eight and number eight is core for you, you've only got seven minutia. So please be careful with that, no core. All right, next. Deltas and cores, like I just said. <laughs> okay, so we just talked about the core. But the delta, remember, it looks like a triangle. Cicatrix, I've got a lot of them, so you always know where my fingerprints are involved because there's cicatrix all over the place. And you know, that was a big hint for the crime for that. So keep that in mind. Uh, for some reason, let's pretend we're back in May. Um, I will try to truncate the um, crime as much as I can, or maybe do some weird summer thing. I don't know, and the police could help me set it up. You know, the poor challenge kids aren't getting to do their challenge either. So um, that's a good thing for me to think about, that if for some reason we don't get back into school, uh, that we could maybe do something right as school we get out or whenever it becomes safe for all of us to be closer than six foot together. Um, I don't know, something to think about. So keep that in mind, help me remember to, as we get closer, cause you know, I, there's a lot of stuff going on. So the better, you know, more we can help each other out, the better off we are. Okay, and so of course there's the card that I had you fill out and hopefully you have that. If you don't, let me know and I will get you these pictures so that you can make one for home. Okay, and then the comparison showing that, you know, you're not going to go into a crime where the prints are perfect, like what is on the left. That's a perfect print, probably from an arrest record, you know, with the police, they do a perfect print and they'll do it again until they get one. And then you have the right is what's actually left at a crime scene where you've got pieces that are missing and it's super hard to see. So some of you when we were doing lab, there were parts that you could really see well and other parts that you weren't. And I would say, mm, if you can get a better one, do it. But this, it isn't impossible to do this one. 
So, because when you got to the crime, I'm, I would do my best to leave you perfect prints, but you know, it doesn't always work out that way. So, um, I don't know. There you go. Okay, so the second principle says that a fingerprint will remain unchanged during an individual's lifetime. You can't change it no matter what you try unless you completely cut all the way down to the dermis. And so um, John Dillinger, he, like I told you, he tried and he tried to, he put his fingers in the acid and kind of took them off and you can see that it worked in parts, but you know, they could still identify him. So that didn't work. Okay, and like I said, you gotta cut down all the way to the dermis. So you've gotta get the acid all the way down here or actually a little bit below here where I'm showing you with my little pointer all the way here to try to get all the way down so that you your fingerprints don't ever show up again and <clears throat> he clearly couldn't keep his fingers in long enough I, you know i can't i wouldn't have been able to even put my fingerprints in i'm too big of a chicken okay and then the third principle is that fingerprints um that they have the pat writ, general ridge patterns that we can identify and that's what we have on our card on both sides so um there's the classes of prints you've got loops swirls um and arches and we're going to quickly go through those again and play a little game and then kind of move on okay so um the loops rolls and arches like i said so there's a loop and remember with the loop we've got the radial and ulnar with the radial being the thumb side and the ulnar being the pinky side and that's on your card and in order to um figure out what type of loop this is um, you'd ha either have to know which hand this came from, um, if we're looking at this way, um, or they'd have to tell you it's a radial and you'd have to figure out which hand. So I'm going to pretend that this is a, from a left hand. So I would put, well, let's say it's from a right hand. Let's do that because that's easier for me to show you. Okay. So if it's from a right hand, I would put my hand palm up so I can see my palm and then I put it towards the loop. And either my pinky, my pinky or my thumb is going to fit into that loop. And when I put this up to the screen, from my point of view, it is my pinky. I'm not sure what your point of view will be, but definitely my pinky is fitting into this loop right here. So I would say that is an ulnar loop of the right hand. Okay, and so again, there's the print from a right hand. You put your hand up and my pinky fits in there from my point of view, what I'm looking at. Not sure how much this inverts what you're seeing, so that's I'll find out in the Q and A. So right now, from this from my right hand, this is another ulnar loop, and you'll let me know. Well, it says ulnar loop. Is it an ulnar loop for you? I don't know. You'll tell me in the Q and A. And then this is a radial loop. If this is the right hand, I put my hand hands my palm. I can see my palm. I can see my palm. My palm faces me, not you. And my thumb fits in there, so radial loop. Okay, and so whorls, whorls have to have, um, they can have one or more core, but they have to have two deltas. And so you see a delta here and a delta here. And the type of whorl depends on, you know, let's just see it. And there's the delta and whether or not you can draw, when you draw a line from delta to delta, if it goes through any of the whorl, it's considered, whoops, hello, back up, back up. If it goes to the whorl, you see it going through there, then that is called a plane whorl. Okay, and so there's the two deltas with the circles. I hope you can see them. And then the line, and is the line going through the whorl? Well, if you look at it, it is. So that again is another plane whorl. Okay, and so a central pocket loop is where again I have two deltas, but when I draw a line this time, as you can see, it doesn't go through any of the, the completed circles. It's going through part of it, but if you look, it's not real. it's going through a part that doesn't make a complete circle. So this is called, um, let's say line does not go through spiral core. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Hmm. Didn't notice that till right now. I am certainly blind, so sorry about that. So that was a central pocket loop where it doesn't go through the worlds. And as you can see, here's something that, um, I found between a plane whirl where it goes to the whirl, as you can see, and a central pocket loop where it doesn't go through it. Okay, a double loop, it looks like an S like Superman. So you've seen that before. And there it is, close up. Okay, and an accidental 
um, it's just a print that you can't really tell like this one, like I told you uh, in class, it kind of looks like magnetic board. So you, it's kind of hard to identify, so accidental. All right, and then finally we've got the arches. Um, the arches where um, you've got, it goes in one side and, be, and the ridge goes out the other side. Um, so you've got a plain arch, which it's pretty shallow. It goes up and then back down and you can see how shallow, how shallow it is um, right here. It goes up uh, in one side, out the other, and it's pretty shallow. And then you've got the tented arch where again, it goes in one side, out the other, but you can see it's a much steeper rise. And so that's a tented arch. Okay, so identify each fingerprint pattern. So take a second and pause the video and write A, B, C, D, E. This is not something you're gonna turn in, not something I'm gonna ask for, but just do it for the heck of it. Um, so pause it right now and write A, B, C, D, E and see if you can come up with the fingerprint pattern. Okay, I'll let you pause. Okay, well, now that you've paused and hopefully had a time to take a shot at it, these are the answers that I came up with on A. Um, I, if this is the left hand, now it says the hands because it's, you know, trying to, just in case you need, if it's a loop. Okay, I decided that A was a plain whorl because if I draw a line from delta, there's two deltas, I draw a line from delta to delta, then, um, and it went through the circles, if you look, it went through the spirals, so therefore it's a plain whorl. And then B, I decided it's a double loop, as you can see, there's an S kind of form there, so double loop. And if you look at C, now we're not looking down here, you're looking up here at the top of this. And that is a radial loop. Now, whoops, let me go back. It says it's from the right hand. And so my right hand, palm facing me. And if I look, my thumb goes in there and that's radius, so that's a radial loop. And then, um, and I also know it's a loop, which I didn't say when we were back in the thing, that a loop comes, in one side, it goes back out that same side. I forgot, I left that out on accident. Okay, and then D, that's definitely an arch because I'm going in one side and out the other, but which type is it? Well, at first I had a different arch. I said it was a plain arch, but then I went to E, where again, it's an arch. It goes in one side and out the other, but it's more shallow. So I said, this is the plain arch and I left D as the tented arch, so. I initially had D as plain arch until I did E because I didn't think D was a real sharp upturn, but I guess it is, but that's that. Okay, so again, here's AFIS, remember automatic fingerprint identification system and fingerprints that are kept if you are arrested, right? Okay, and so this is normally, you know, they don't usually ink your prints anymore in bigger cities, it's scanned through a computer. A latent print is a hidden print. So right now, if you touch your key, if you touch your screen, um, you'll kind of see a print, but we'd still have to lift it with fingerprinting dust. Or if I touch the table that I'm on, um, I couldn't see the print, but if I dusted, I'd be able to see it because of the oils left behind. That's latent or hidden. And then a visible print, you can see this is a print right here on the jeans from somebody having their hands in blood and then touching that. So you can see that they've got the ruler right there. And so that's a visible print because, hey, look, a print. Okay, and then plastic prints would be a print like in clay or Play-Doh, and all of us have done that at some point or another, gone, ooh, and it's pretty clear. That's a great print, you know, but, you know, how often do criminals go, I'm gonna put my prints for them in clay so it's easy, you know not that often. Okay, so um, when we have hard non-absorbent surfaces, this is when we do the super glue fuming. Um, this is on super glue fuming on a gun. You can see how nice and clear that is. Um, it's been dusted with white powder, which we would have played with. I also have some neon powder, but again, we can play with it this summer. We'll figure it out. Okay, so today's homework. Um, in RenWeb, there will be a Google link to the Google, or a link to the Google Classroom where you'll find the fingerprint review page. Um, it is due Tuesday, 3.31 by Q&A time, okay? And so you're just gonna print it out, um, fill it out, take a photo, and then upload that photo to my Google Classroom. However, 
I'm not sure, because I haven't met with you yet, how many of you have a printer, how many of you have printers, and how many of you don't. I'm hoping most or all of you do. However, if you don't, um, you just need to shoot me an email, let me know I don't have um, a printer. And what you'll do is I'll have to walk you through how to, the PDF, you'll have to go someplace where you can, I'll tell you what to up, download the PDF to so that you can write on it and well it won't be writing on it but you'll be using your computer text things like we do on our um, cell phones when we're looking when we've taken pictures of evidence so and you all know way more about this than i do so you may already know this i'm just learning all of it so it's all new to me and so um brain's kind of leaking out of my ears at this point but you know it is what it is anyway i'll be really glad when i see you all again <laughs> okay so um anyway so that is it for today i really appreciate you all um listening to me jibber jabber and i really hope that this becomes less wooden over time this is my first one for you all so um please bear with me while i learn how to do this and not sound like i'm speaking to a green dot and hopefully will soon sound like i'm speaking to you all in a classroom the best i can but i really miss you and i miss talking to you and i miss interacting with you and well it is what it is and i'm looking forward to q a time so i can see all of you so have a good night and please say or a good day and please stay safe guys bye <laughs>